is this thing on? Tap, 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 tap. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, tech fans of all shapes and sorts and sizes and persuasions, welcome to a completely impromptu stream that I had no idea was going to take place today because I'm crazy excited about the box that just showed up on my doorstep. hey Um, I did not set up for this. I, 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 my office is in complete disarray. Um, I'm wearing my, my busted old Wayland yutani cap. And I just got back from the dentist where I got my next set of Invisalign trays. So I'm going to be lockjaw this entire video. My mouth hurts so bad because I haven't gotten new trays in a while. And these are just ratcheting that up. But we've got a really cool phone to talk about. Because when I came back from the dentist and I was being all sore and cranky pants and, you know, kind of sad bear. This, this was on my doorstep, which is the LG Wing. And uh, as you can see from this really cool box, this is the world's first 5G swivel phone. Um, someone, someone in the in the live chat or on Twitter, or someone already made the joke, and I'm mad because I was gonna make this joke on the stream, and now it just looks like I'm copying them. I love that they put the world's first 5G 5G swivel phone uh, because you know people out there would have been like, oh, excuse me, I once had a sidekick, and that could swivel screen, so it's not like the world's first swivel screen phone. Thank you very much. So, um, crazy, cr crazy live chats I'm already seeing from everybody. Um, I'm stoked. I know there's been some commentary out. Uh, I, I want to use this as a special shout out for Issa Does Tech. Um, she's got one of my sort of favorite up and comer YouTube channels, and she's, she's an amazing commentator when it comes to phones and style, you know, the style in lifestyle. And I've really enjoyed her videos on the LG Wing, but now I finally get to play with one myself. So, uh, you know, it's, it's about me now. <laughs> Issa does tech. Great. I love your, your pre-show. Now it's time for the main event. I'm just saying. Um, so I'm going to try, like I said, I, I kind of stapled this all together real quickly. I'm going to try and make this work. But as you can see, like right there, I have another camera set up. All right, fingers crossed, everyone. I'm going to try and switch. Ha <laughs> uh, You can see my, um, my, my, my knees. That's going to be kind of gross. But you know, we can at least do a proper unboxing here. And LFA Reviews, Issa is the coolest. I really love what she's been doing on her channel. And again, a phone like the Wing, I feel, is right in her wheelhouse. But this is also just something really cool. I was super excited to be a part of the sort of limited uh, reviewer release for the Velvet, where LG has been getting a lot smarter and a lot savvier at putting together like cool reviewer kits and stuff. Um, this, okay, sorry, I got, I got to jump out of this real quick. Between you and me and everyone here in this live stream, as a special shout out to every phone manufacturer out there. The LGs, the OnePluses, the Samsungs, um, you know, the, the Microsofts. What I've got here in front of me is a wonderful experience. It is a box that has been put together to craft a certain kind of feel, a certain kind of show, you know, something that makes the unboxing of a new gadget feel special. So, manufacturers, if you're listening out there, I would, I, I, I'm begging you. Put a limited edition like this available for your consumers to buy. I think OnePlus has come closest. They had like a little pop-up store where you got a cute bag, accessories in the bag. But in a world where, <clears throat> in a world where we're probably going to be pulling things out of the phone box, you know, like chargers and earbuds and all of the other accessories that you kind of need to make a phone your phone. Help, help your customers out. This is going to make them feel so much more special when this arrives on their doorstep. When, when this really nice crafted experience shows up, this is, this is the gig. And you don't have to make all of your phones like this. Don't sell all of your phones like that. But you know, like for the first thousand people that put in pre-orders on a phone like the Wing, uh, ooh, there's like a, this is kind of weighty. I don't know what's in here. Oh, it's the video brochure. Um, is there like a, let's see what's in this box. I, but I mean, like everyone should kind of have some kind of experience that they get to play with. What, what is, what is this? What, what is this? I was not prepared for what would be here in the box, but it feels like there's like a USB cable. I don't know if it's just like, like flash storage or something. I'll try and screen share that if I can. 
but <laughs> what? Holy cow! It's a little mini video display thing. We can see this versatile form factor. What is this? Holy cow! So I can sit here and play. Hold on. Uh, so worlds first. Let, let's play this video next. I'm, I'm probably gonna get this video flagged for copyright. <laughs> this is crazy. I wonder if I can like take this screen apart and use it. Oh, so there's like the little there's like a little USB cable right there. Like, will it? Oh, and it turns off when you close it. I, I'm gonna go through that. I, I probably just with what music just got played. Um, YouTube's probably gonna flag this video now. That's nuts. Oh, I gotta I gotta like flip back here. This is this is like th this this right here is is probably like the savviest thing LG has ever done putting together a reviewer kit. LG, mega thumbs up. Now I'm I'm I am begging you. I mean, I know you probably can't do it for this year's phones, but make make an extra 500 of these. Now, maybe that's too many, but make more of these. And the next time you're launching those pre-orders, get these into like the first thousand customers' hands. I'm telling you, this this is just such... For, for all of our shiny new gadgets being kind of about the feels, like we want it to feel special, we want it to be cool, we want to feel like, oh, we're a part of something. Something like this is awesome! You just like open it up and it starts playing. <laughs> it's got a little battery right there. It tells you if you need to charge it. This is totally like going up on the Gadget Lab bookcase right next to my plaque for my limited edition LG Velvet. <laughs> this is hilarious. This is awesome. I love this so much. Okay. So let's, let, let, let's actually see if we can get to the phone here. I'm getting all flush with excitement. Or is it, is it dentistry? I, I have no idea anymore. <laughs> Paper. Oh, and it still does have like a proper reviewer's guide. So we can still kind of check out what, what's going on in here. Um, I know the, the Velvet reviewer's guide was very helpful because it did detail like some of the changes, uh, like how they were gonna be uh, passing on the, uh, the V-series uh, name. So it says, hey Juan, eager to take flight on your next adventure once we feel a little safer? Whether you're planning a vacation to an island in the tropics or a day with the friends and family in your own backyard, one thing remains certain, exploration has taken on a whole new meaning these days. To arm you for all of your socially distanced adventures, we are excited to share with you the new LG Wing. Your friends at LG, that is awesome. So it, it looks like we've got um, a case Okay, so these des design skin cases have been awesome. I love the uh, the strap case that comes for the for the velvet, and this one looks a lot like that. So this is a credit card case that we can clip on to the back of of the uh, of the wing. There's like a little. Oh, I can peel this out. Ready? Yeah, get rid of that. Excellent. So this will snap onto the back of the wing. Um, I'm really excited about this because I feel like folding phones and hinge phones and stuff like that. Um, I'm not a big fan of adhesive bumper style protection, so that's kind of cool. And then it looks like we also have an LG face mask. Hold on, let me, um, let me open this now. Now I'm enough of a germaphobe that I will not be putting this on right now in the stream because I don't put anything on my face until I have a chance to wash it. But you needed your own LG face mask. They've got one in there too. Oh, that's so cute. Oh, I love this reviewer kit. I'm I'm very I'm very Twitter pated about what LG is doing here. I man, video video brochure. God, just that is so fun. But here's the main event. Here's what we're actually here to unbox and start setting up and start checking out. Uh, let me let me move this box off the table here. And that this is the wing i'm gonna see real quick sorry if i can this my camera is just really bright like i said i didn't have a chance to properly set all this up so lg wing um do not accept if seal is broken the seal is not broken lucille i'm gonna avoid this now and peel this off the box and just a humble worm saying, so nice to see a case for the wing. I'm Again, I'm very anxious 
I have been a huge fan of dual display. LG has me sold. I think dual display is the best balance of functionality and compromise. Oh, here's the wing. Um, but when we're talking about a, a hinge that's built onto the phone, that's what makes me a little nervous. That's what makes me a little anxious. But it's so skinny. It's so thin. Hold on, I got to get my velvet out of the dual display here real quick because I just kind of want to see a quick compare and contrast before I start peeling off all the plastic. Man, these are tall boys. Um, yeah, pretty, pretty dead on. I was expecting this to be just sort of a, a slightly chunkier velvet, and yeah, it does not disappoint. We're right on. Um, I, I know, remember like when uh, Essential was showing off that gem concept phone, it's like, oh, it's so skinny. Woof. Ooh, it was a good catch. <laughs> it's very slippery. So I'm very happy that they gave us a case. <laughs> Gotta peel this label off because I always hate it when there's like the big old barcode label. I gotta have some sticky residue on the back of my wing here, but at least get it get it done. All right, before I even boot it up, I gotta do this because I've been watching so many videos do this. Are y'all ready? Are we ready for the first flick? Here we go. Ah, look at that. That is so fun. Flat screen on the bottom, some kind of curved tapered edges, just like the just like the velvet, and it's got a really satisfying little snick to it. Nick. So one of the things I really dig, and, and again, I, I got to shout out folks like Isa, is that it's not just a flick like it snaps into place. There's just enough of a float right there. You see that? So we're dealing with touch screens. These are big, fragile, sensitive bits of consumer electronics, and I don't think we'd want something that would just be like snap, snap, snap. So it's got just that little bit of a hover, just that little bit of a float right before it locks into place. But yeah, I've been seeing like people playing on it. You know, it feels really sturdy. Oh, uh, it feels really nice in the hand. It feels like it was made for an evolved primate. Um, and then I def, I man, I'm gonna be spending so much time checking out these cameras because the cameras on the back are kind of crazy. So let's let's get this case on. I just want to see if the case. So the case doesn't really hook on. It kind of floats the back of the phone. And you can see there's just like a little bit of a squish, kind of a gap. Because I would imagine you'd need this to stay totally clear of the hinge mechanism so that the case doesn't impede the flick. So it doesn't, it doesn't really, you know, like a lot of cases would kind of wrap over to the edge of the screen, you know, give you a little clearance right there. One of the things I'm gonna be a little concerned about is how we protect the front face on, on, on a gadget like this, if it's a scrollable, if it's a twisting display, if it's a dual screen display, um, I'm hoping we'll see some good screen protectors. Well, you know what? Actually, I take that back. Wing is probably going to be easier than you know V60 was because I can only really put plastic screen guards on V60. I can't put glass. Actually, if if it's not too heavy a screen protector, I would imagine a glass screen protector would work really well there. So yeah, that's. And I, I love the back of that. Again, uh, I feel like uh, I need to shout out Isa because I think she just had the regular bumper on the back of hers. So uh, this is definitely way more stylish. I think this is, this is way prettier um, than just a, an adhesive bumper. But let's see what else kind of came in the box here. Um, LG's committed to peace of mind. These are all just the papers. Do we care about the papers? I don't think we care about the papers. Let's kind of get, get that over there. Here's a charger with a USB-C cable. Always nice to have a charger in the box when we're switching cable standards to something like USB-C. I feel other manufacturers could take notice of when you're changing your consumers from one USB cable standard to another, you might wanna wait a generation until there are some more chargers like that out in the wild. I think that's a nice consideration. Um, <laughs> I couldn't help a little snark there. And then here's the thing I've been most anxious about. I'm gonna have to play with this and see what this does. But this is uh, the LG, the first LG I've used in a while that does not have a built-in headphone jack. 
And uh, I'm, I'm really hoping that they've put in something decent here. As long as this is tracking loosely the same sound quality as the headphone jack that's on, uh, that's on the Velvet, I think we'll be in pretty good shape. Um, you know, the dongle did come in the box though. So here's the thing, I, I immediately, A number one, with a bullet, where I get to praise LG, if you were going to put anything for audio in the box, I prefer the dongle so that I can use it with headphones of my choosing, as opposed to putting in USB-C headphones or lightning connector headphones, and then you have to jump through additional hoops just to get a headphone jack back. So this, this was the correct choice. I'm just hoping that what LG has done here in the little, if this is a DAC amp or if this is just an audio pass-through, I'm, I'm hoping that we at least have the same audio quality as, as what we got on Velvet. Obviously, it would be super rad if this were somehow a quad DAC. I don't think it could be a quad DAC dongle, but it would be real cool if it was. It'd be a lot cooler if it did. Um, so uh, here, actually, I'm gonna switch back to the other camera, the main camera here for just a second, and I'm gonna start booting this up and installing stuff. I, I've been looking over here on the side, so I have not, I, I have not seen uh, any of the chat. Has there, have there been any good questions? Have there anybody uh, comments, anything that uh, someone might be interested in? <laughs> yeah, Route Night 5, I doubt they'd not advertise a quad DAC dongle. Ah. <laughs> uh. And from Elefe, an LG quad, doc, quad DAC dongle would be dope. I've been having a devil of a time finding... Remember, like, when we first started doing this, um, this, like, no headphone jack on phones experiment? There were a few more options that were getting put out there. People would say, oh, what you need to do is get the Razer phone dongle. Or you need to get, you know, the, uh, the Google Pixel dongle. Those are going to be the good dongles. And there was kind of like a... Not an arms race, but th there were, were more options out there. And I think we've all kind of given up on USB-C dongles. And so I'm hoping, I'm hoping this is a good one to recommend. I was not impressed with the Surface dongle. Um, that one I did not think was good. Uh, so they're, they're, it would be cool. Like you'd say, like, you know, even if you don't have an LG, you could go to LG's website and pick up this $20 dongle and it's got an ESS DAC in it and it's surprisingly good. I'd like to have some options like that that I could recommend to people. Um, so the battery, oh, the battery's halfway. I mean, we can, it, it's doing an, an initialization and part of the setup wizard. Um, so that's not particularly exciting. And uh, my speakers are, 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 inter are catching what this phone is putting out. That's a little, a little radioactive. <laughs> um, phone activation wizard, please wait while we activate your new phone. This may take up to five minutes. <laughs> Ooh, it really is. Hold on, let's do some ASMR. I could turn that into the next pop hit right there. That's like, that's some daft punk just coming right off what, what this phone is putting out. Um, LFA reviews, there are still some good dongle DACs available. There absolutely are. Um, I, I'm not trying to say, you know, like, uh, that you can't find a good solution. I just mean, there, there was, like, a bit more searching. I could do a video review on a couple. Those reviews would do really well. Now it just kind of feels like, you know, Bluetooth and True Wireless have sort of taken over that chunk of the audio conversation. So, I, and also, I, I, I'll be curious to see, like, what should I pair with this? Um... Got the LG Buds. I mean, that's the most obvious for doing like videos and reviews and stuff. Um, but maybe I'll, I'll go one more. Uh, my Color Buds are actually paired with my Tick Watch. Maybe I could do um, something like that. Okay, so, oh! This is actually kind of cool too. Okay, so this is the Verizon model and it looks like uh, they've, they've hooked up a, uh, a test SIM because I don't actually have Verizon service, so it just activated a phone number for me to use, so I'll be able to use it. There is no Verizon 5G in my neighborhood. I am a bit off the beaten path, so um, let's, let's hook up the Wi-Fi <laughs> instead <laughs> because I feel like that's going to be better for... Oh, now I have to remember my Wi-Fi password. Hold on. Mm-hmm. I can't do my, my Wi-Fi password without kind of saying it out. So I've turned it into a song. Um, and we're going to connect. 
It has found my, it has gotten an IP address. It is now connected. Excellent. So it's checking for updates now. Again, not particularly excited. I'm gonna, I can't turn down the screen brightness when we're doing the setup. Uh, Mr. Co uh, Comer, I hope T-Mobile gets the wing, fingers crossed. I'm pretty sure, um, or at least ask Dez, that T-Mobile, that awesome T-Mobile dude was talking about there being a, an LG wing, I think that's gonna be coming to T-Mobile. Uh, JJ saying I should try and hook up the OnePlus Buds. Um, well, I need to get some OnePlus Buds. That would definitely help um, that OnePlus uh, situation. Because I'm so used to LG and audio quality, I'm probably gonna start with my FIO. I'll, I'll pop the FIO. Well, no, my FIO was last connected to my Surface and TK has my Surface. So I'll, I'll switch this over and I'll also have this as like my wireless solution. I gotta play with some good cabled audio options too. Okay, copy apps and data. So I'm going to um, sign in. So I can't show you this part either because it's like my main Gmail account. Oh, JJ saying the neck bands. I do have my old OnePlus bullets. Actually, that could be kind of cool too. See if they, but I mean, if I'm going to go neck band, I, I, I've got a treasure trove of like classic LG tones. I got, I think I might need to do LG on LG, some, some, some retro, some tone neck bands. Maybe if, uh, I hope it still charges that big old fat tone studio that makes me look like I'm like Clydesdale. I'm some kind of workhorse. Um, that might, okay, that might be my jam. I know I was asking for suggestions, but now I'm like, no, 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 no I'm gonna do an LG neck band. Burp, burp. Um, and my password. One, two, three, four, five. The best password ever. Oh, and I've gotta activate says my V60 is going to confirm me. I said yes. Two-step verification isn't really working. It said it also sent to another phone. Let's, let's try. This new two-step verification process is, is way handier for consumers. It is not super great for um, for tech reviewers. Like, it does not work as well as you would think it would. Yeah, because it's saying I need to resend it. Come on. I'm doing this live. Doing it live. There we go. Okay, I agree for you to use my Gmail account on this and getting my account info. Nyonix, the Tone Studio are classic, man. I Again, they, they don't look great, but they are so functional and so much fun. And having speakers and, and earbuds, real good, real good. And Nyonix is saying the T-Mobile is getting the wing. I was pretty sure they would be. Uh, Mr. Co uh, Mr. Comer with a super sticker. Clinking a drink right there. Well, thank you very much. I appreciate uh, Super Sticker. I, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, again for supporting production on this channel, and I'll clink a drink. I, I'm again. I didn't even have time to fill up one of my merch mugs to plug my own merch, so I'm just gonna clink some water with you there. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay. Um, choose a backup to restore. Does it have? Actually, you know what? I mean, like my Pixel Five. Oh, I, I don't think I need to get my Pixel 5. I can just tap this in. Confirm. Confirm. It's also one of the things like I really enjoyed being on 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 Google Fi is you know, like I can forward my number. I mean, I know most cell phone carriers let you do stuff like that now, but it should be a little easier just kind of passing this passing this over now. So I, actually, I'm just going to let it kind of install everything here. So the phone is going to be a little slow. While, um, while I set up the rest of this, but I'm gonna let it go to town. It's gonna say restore. You can continue setting up your LM-F100 just a second. And more and more and accept. Oh yeah, sorry, I gotta do fingerprints and stuff here too. Okay, uh, set up fingerprint. Next, add your fingerprint. 
Next. Select your screen lock pin. One, two, three, four, five. Next, confirm. One, two, three, four, five. Hit OK. I hope you guys aren't gonna like share my super secret passwords and stuff. Because that would be that would be really rude of you to do that, is what I'm saying. Um, okay. So yeah, fingerprint sensor is on the main screen. Uh, actually, I mean, if we want, we can go through the setup process here. I don't think I'm showing off anything too sensitive from this point here. So uh, thumbprint, 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 thumbprint. Already, this feels like it's working just a little smoother than the velvet. Uh, I gotta say, I mean, I haven't been super impressed with like the current quality of in-display fingerprint sensors. I had a devil of a time getting a feel for uh, the Note 20. Um, just because it's, you know, it doesn't light up, there's less of a, let me add one more for my left thumb. There, there, you know, because there's no landmark and it doesn't light up. The Note 20 had a very odd feel to me because um, I'm also not spending as much time with every single permutation of Samsung device out there. But, uh, this is and edges. OK. And hit OK. Just a second. Um, subscribe to get daily updates. Uh, do, do, do I want my phone to send me a joke every I'm, I'm going to pause on that. I, I feel like Assistant already has enough of my stuff. Um, Verizon services. I'm going to skip Verizon Cloud for now. Skip it. Digital secure. Okay, ready to go. Just a sec. And here is the, uh, the LG Wing. Let's just drop the screen brightness a little bit more. So it's going to be loading a bunch of, a bunch of apps in the background. But immediately, uh, again, from, from playing with the first flick, I kind of want to see. Introducing Swivel Home. Next. Add and rearrange apps. So we're going to get kind of like it looks like a gallery view that we can, we can kind of play with. That's going to be fun. Try opening an app on each screen or use multi-app shortcut to open two apps at once. And second screen apps. You can select which apps will open on second screen in settings. Some apps can't be opened from second screen or displayed properly on this screen. And done. So the, the whole UI shifts into kind of a carousel view. Oh, I long pressed it right there. OK. So right now, it's, it's only kind of like the main things that they're, that they're setting up. So I can open up the gallery. I can turn on the camera, fire up some YouTube, do maps. Or play Asphalt 9. <laughs> um, hold on. Actually, I really want to see uh, if the game launcher. OK, so one of the things I was really hoping is that in the game launcher, we would have the ability to make like a little custom controller. So I'm going to send a message out to LG. Dear LG, just like I have a game controller for the dual display on like my V60 and my Velvet, let me make like a little Game Boy style controller. So what game settings? Let's see what the settings are. Game tools, game graphics, and break time. Um, let's turn off break time. I never need to take a break when I'm gaming because I'm a hardcore mobile gamer. Um, let's fire up the camera so you can see my blackout curtains. Um, tag locations. Later. Gimbal mode. Prevent the camera from shaking by using your phone as a gimbal. For best results, record in areas with lots of light. So it does seem like it's going to be a combination of hardware and software. Um, if, they're, if they're recommending a lot of light, that means you kind of need to keep your shutter speed in check. So moving the joystick. Ooh, that's a pretty decent field of view. To control with the uh, the joystick, I like that. That's smooth. I'm gonna do this one more time. Okay, ready? 
go and go and got it uh, touch and hold the lock button oh that's kind of so this is also why you need more light so something tells me that there is a hardware component where the camera can wiggle itself a little bit but then it's shooting a very wide field of view and then using some software to also kind of pan and scan. So when I'm holding this lock, you can see on the, the text of the feel box, because I mean, this is indoor lighting. I don't have like full studio lights on for everything, but you can see how it gets just that little bit fuzzy as the phone is compensating for my hand movement. And that's not all pure hardware. That is, there, there has to be some software um, kind of crop pan and scanning in there. But the fact that they can do that in real time and, and in, in multiple um, directions where I'm, I'm not trying to make it look nice, where I'm actually trying to get the phone to skip a little, that's, that's pretty impressive, um, especially considering the, the chipset that's in this phone. Reset button. Oh, okay, so they're saying calibrate. Okay, so when you hit the reset button, it says calibrate, but it just kind of resets the uh, the camera to that. Then first person view mode. Freely move in any direction. Use this mode when you're trying to create a video with from all sorts of angles. So that's first person view mode. Then pan follow. Move the angle left or right with the upper and lower axes fixed. Okay, this helps to keep the camera level when you're in a moving car or going up and, up and down stairs. And follow mode, move the angle horizontally or vertically. You can record your travels with a view similar to how I see. I'm not sure that's the best description of, of a vertical follow mode. So let's try follow. Okay, but then pan follow. Okay, and you can see it does how it gets just that little bit fuzzy when you do an extreme change. And that's because we don't have a ton of light to work with here. Let me, let me angle this better. So it's keeping the frame locked really well. So now if I go to that follow mode, I can go up and down, but it's going to try. Oh, I guess not. Maybe I had that wrong. But then first person view mode. I'm going to have to play with that more. I'm not entirely sure what exactly the feel or the difference should be between first person, first person view and follow. So I thought follow was kind of locking the lateral movement and pan was locking the vertical movement. But I guess I have that wrong. But let's see, HD, full HD. So again, when we're really in gimbal mode, they're, they're uh, keeping resolution in check here, but I definitely want at least 1080p. I probably don't care about HEVC. Um, gimbal mode, shutter speed, shutter sound. <laughs> Let's get rid of the shutter sound. I like my grid on. Watermark is off, and we're not going to tag locations. Beautiful. Then dual recording. Well, hello there. Dual recording, how fancy. This is a feature we, we used to have all the time on phones like the LG G3. <laughs> now we finally have it back on a modern phone. I'm very happy to see this. This, this, is, this is very good. Um, and then I just want to see what happens. Let me flip this down. Oh, and now we go to the more traditional camera interface. So closing the screen. Next. Next. Done. Okay. So we got video, and I, I really want to see, do we get manual video back? <gasps> oh, guys, I'm so happy. Oh, this is so good. So we kind of lost manual video on, on the Velvet, but the wing brings back manual video, and we can shoot 4K at 60 frames per second while controlling the bitrate. <laughs> oh man oh this was like the one big thing that like kept me v60 over velvet and it's so back so yeah oh and at that 80 megabit per second bit rate uhd 60 frames per second audio controls oh my god so happy i'm so happy to have these back <laughs>
Okay, this I, I have to go back into uh, main camera here. This this was one of the concerns. Um, we, we switched from the G series and we called the, the next phone the Velvet. And I'm okay with the Velvet being a consumer play. You don't need all of the content creator, manual video, all of those bells and whistles. I'm, I'm actually fine with that. But it made me really anxious um, if there would be a, a V series follow up that would have all of these features that I kind of actually depend on. Like, I shoot on LG phones really heavy because of those features. When I'm incorporating footage into my reviews and shooting B-roll and doing location stuff and I just want to do a silly vlog or I'm shooting video of my daughter, like, I use that stuff so heavy. And, and if LG was going to walk away from that on the next V-Series or the V-Series replacement, I mean, like, that, that could have been the end of me really using LG as my, like, content creation solution and seeing that kind of stuff here on the wing... So happy, makes me so happy. I was I was so worried. Ah, oh, I love it. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. Maybe I could have just moved over to a Sony. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I love those Xperia's. Um, oh, speaking of, do I have my Xperia in here? Because it would be kind of funny, just like super tall, skinny phones. But I don't. Oh, it might be in the living room. Ah. Yeah, I think it, I think it's in the other room um, because it's Techtober, and as my daughter would say, uh, you have too many phones. Um, <laughs> Raphael, we all love ASMR Juan. Happy Juan noises. Uh, JPN, can you use an external mic input through the headphone adapter? That is a very good question. Um, I want to see. Actually, here real quick. Yeah, I do the fingerprint sensor. I think the fingerprint sensor is a little better um, on Wing than it was on Velvet. Or at least it just kind of opened up here a little bit quicker. So I've got the dongle plugged in. I don't see anything popping up. So oftentimes when it's a when it's a true um, DAC, when the DAC is in the dongle, you might see something like, hey, there's a firmware update that needs to run, or we're, we're recognizing that some kind of USB device has been plugged in. Oh, actually, no, this is good. Okay, so it's saying power supply. So something is connected to the USB port, and it is feeding power. That, to me, would mean that this is a USB DAC, not a pass-through with some kind of DAC that's built into the phone. It's still updating and installing all of my apps and stuff. So, do I have, in what way, just watched Ferris Bueller again recently. So I'm, I'm trying not to just make my stream a, sort of a collective quoting of every single line from Ferris Bueller's day off. Bueller, Bueller. So, let's turn on the camera. <laughs> and, and it pops right up. So, fingers crossed, I don't know, and I don't have anything to test this on right now, but if this can read a USB DAC, I, there's, there's, there's the outside hope. There is a little slice of potential that we might be able to use a USB audio interface with the LG camera app. Because I feel like that's been one of the only things lacking from LG. Samsung, again, with their phones not having headphone jacks, they just recently introduced support in, I think, on the Note 10. Someone correct me if I'm wrong. I think it first showed up on the Note 10. But on the Note 20, you can tell it, look for the USB port. So that would be really nice. I don't need you to show me how to do gestures. No, I didn't want to do that. Next, 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 done. Go back, go back to the camera, go back to the camera. Um, that would be really cool if you could plug like a USB audio interface into the phone and then have that show up as the option. But at least with the dongle, it's recognizing that you can switch over. And I just have my, my KZs here. There's like a little headset mic on the KZs. 
I don't think you'll be able to see it very well from this angle, but I'm tapping that and it's getting all clicky. So that, that at least works. I'm, I'm happy that this is, this is correct. <laughs> uh, Nyanix is asking wing or V60. So here's the deal. Um, wing I'm very excited about and wing represents a really cool experiment of a form factor. But that also means that we've got to temper that conversation with the kinds of consumers who might be interested in something that's a little, a little new, a little fresh, a little unfamiliar. Um, that it's not just, oops, I accidentally launched a game there. Um, that it's not the same kind of experience every other phone can provide. Only just having gotten this out of the box, I feel in this moment of a first impression that the V60 represents the better buy for someone who wants a powerful device. I mean, yeah, it's still one of the most powerful phones of the year, but they're not married to the experiment. You can pick up a dual display case, you can still rock it as a standalone phone. And that's going to be safer, right? Um, I, like, like I said you know, at the beginning of the stream, I am very sold. I'm very taken by dual display. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm missing... I, I've got the Note 20 Ultra over here. It is easily one of the beastiest phones of 2020. And... I can't tell you how much I miss having the Surface Duo in-house. I'm, I'm in. I'm sold. Dual display is my gig. So having additional real estate, having some other multitasking capability, I want, I want that functionality. So I'd be in. <laughs> I'd be down for using a wing as, as like the phone, but I think it's fair. I think it's fair to point out that there could be some other consumer concerns over, you know, what what LG might be trying to accomplish here or what they might want in a device, especially if they're concerned about a, a phone that's going to be a little bit thicker, might be a little bit trickier to find good cases, accessories. I mean, I, I think all of those things are are fair. Um, so the the person who the person who wants some of this, but they're kind of a little gun shy about just going whole hog onto something that's a married full time hinged device. I, I think you point that person towards V60. Someone who's a little bit more daring and is like, I, I want to do something fun with a phone and I haven't had fun in a while. This is pretty fun. <laughs> that's really fun. I really do like that. I'm Dave Burns. LG is getting weird again. That's always good. Life is good, right? You know, um, see, seeing this as the Explorer concept makes me, again, anxious, but very excited to see what they might be able to do with like a scrolling phone. You know, that, that whole concept that they showed at the, as the teaser for, for the announcement here for the wing. Um, I just, guys, I, it just makes me so happy when you pull up the big bright screen, and th there's no, there's no cut, there's no cutout, there's no hole punch, there's no notch, you know, like a, a one, like a One Plus Seven Pro. It, it's, it's all just continuous. That means the whole screen can be used, and nothing is going to cut out a piece of one of my games or a cinema display aspect ratio movie. You know, I, like I, I put this up next to a Sony again, and you can say, hey. It's all just the screen. That's nice. <laughs> it's such a, like, a, a okay, that, that's nerdcore. I totally appreciate that. Yeah, people can look past notches and hole punches and stuff, but it's just completely un, un, uninterrupted. A display should be a display. I don't, I don't cut a part out of my monitor so that I can mount a webcam. I feel we're getting back to uh, phones. Brr, brr, phones. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> from Pat Produce. It's fine LG's getting weird as long as it's not G5 weird. <laughs> oh, LG G5. Um, <laughs> two phones for free. You love it. I'm, I'm you know, because again, I want to point out there have been some creators who have been a part of this early explorer category. And, and, and like I, I mentioned ESA specifically, you get a good sense of what it is that they're trying to accomplish. It didn't quell some of my anxiousness about this being a hinge that's married to the phone. And I still want to spend some time playing with it. Because like the Surface Duo and like the dual display cases, one of the things about adding moving parts to a phone is getting a feel for what that longer term conversation might be like. Now, this is a phone I want to be able to revisit in a year. And I really, I'm, I'll be very, I'll be a little disappointed if I start using the phone as a phone and then the hinge has loosened up just enough that there's screen wobble when you're just using it as a, as a phone phone. And that's something that we can't quite get a, a handle on in, in these types of very, you know, first week, embargo week, just dropped off on your doorstep kinds of interactions. And so that's where I, I, I kind of hope, you know, as phones get experimental again, those experiments deserve follow through. You know, like look at some of the great videos people have done on the first generation Galaxy Fold up through the launch of the Fold 2. You wanna, we, we, we need more data, right? The, the normal glass on glass slab, we've got a real good handle on how these things age over time. We've been doing this pretty reliably since the Galaxy S6 and iPhones going to glass. Like we grok this. When phones get weird and parts start moving, we need to we need to acknowledge a different lifestyle, durability, companion gadget kind of conversation, and that needs to have the correct follow through, where you need to examine that over a longer period of time. I the, the number one concern I had in flicking this thing open though was softened and dampened by the screen dampening for when it slides open. <laughs> so at least that feels that feels better than what I thought might have happened. Just saying. That's good. I really I really do like that. Um <laughs> From JJ4884, is experimentation dependent on being a premium device? Could this be done on a mid-ranger? So I I think you I think it's kind of like kind of like a tes, Tesla model. Um I kind of feel like you need to start at a higher tier, at a more premium tier, and then you can start pushing some of that experimentation into other ranges. Um you, know, you start with the V50 dual display case. You can follow that up with the G8X because you know you've got a carrier deal where, uh, you know, like AT&T was carrying um, the G8X. So you know you've got a, a guarantee of sales for that. And you start 2020 with the V60 and halfway through 2020, you can move down to the Velvet. Fourth generation of the dual display case, we started playing with premium mid-range. That $600 for the phone price level, the case is sold separately. You can still build in the profit margins to, to um, handle the support calls. When it comes to something where you're building the hinge in here and you have some expectation of durability, I'm going to be very anxious if this shows up on a $400 phone next year. Because I just don't trust that we'll have figured out the manufacturing, replicate the quality assurance, and, and deal with the support issues to a degree that makes sense for you know, uh, you know sort of a medium tier mid range product. Again, I'm, I'm I'm even struggling to come up with the terminology because like now in a world of two thousand dollar folding phones, a mid ranger could be like eight hundred. You know, we still consider that premium. I don't know that manufacturers really do with us. So that was a very rambling way, JJ, <laughs> answering your question. Um, but I, I I feel like you expect. Experiment 
with a more padded profit margin. And then you, once those experiments have matured, you bring those features to more reasonable price points. Because also, I mean, if you dropped this in someone's hands and said like, hey, this is gonna be your new phone, congratulations. Um, I think it would make sort of an average consumer, that general consumer, a little anxious. You know, it's like, well, wh wh but what is it? What does it do? Why does it do that? Uh, I'm not familiar with this. I feel like budget to mid-range is also hinged a lot on that kind of familiarity. Um, I have a, um, a super chat here from Spike Jade. Oh, Spike Jade Dragon. Whew. That was uh, almost, almost dangerous there. Can you test split screen on the top with a notes message app and YouTube and see if the keyboard can extend to the bottom screen? I absolutely can. Let's, let's give that a try. Um, cause I feel like split screen is the, is the feature that is getting overlooked the most. Oh, I need to set up my home screen too. Cause it's just dumping everything out on, on my, uh, I need to set up the app drawer cause it's just dumping everything on my home screens. Okay. So we want to try YouTube. So this is why I'm not familiar with how this is set up. So YouTube. Oh, and now I need to turn on the integrated search. Hold on one second. We're doing it live. We're doing it live. YouTube. <laughs> so, I mean, I've got this awesome Pixel 5 video. We should probably use that as our, uh, as our, our, our way of doing this video. Go ahead and play that. Oh, wait, no, I need to pause it to split screen it and tap there for more options. Go multi-window, next, done. And then um, let's do, uh, I should have messages somewhere in here. Duo docs. Oh yeah, it's like the Verizon messaging. So we'll, we'll start messaging there. Please wait, they're starting the messaging service. I need to install Google Messages so that I don't need to deal with this. That's not great. Let me hold it up to like a window because Verizon don't have the 5Gs in my neighborhood. Um, good. What's new? Introducing chat, stop it, dismiss. Okay, so I have split screen up. So we've got YouTube. Oh, wait, I need to be playing this video if this is going to work. I mean, if it's going to be an actual experiment of, of doing a video while... Um, so, so look at that. That guy's that guy dead sexy. So now I'm going to flick this over. Um, second screen app. Don't show that again. Actually, let me, um, let me click this over real, real quick. Okay. So we've got two apps in split screen. Those are going just fine. And now I just want to see, like if I'm going to reply to this DHL, um, only while using the app. <laughs> Look at that. Oh, that's so handy. I like that a lot. So already seeing these kinds of interactions, super, super smart. And this new LG keyboard, way prettier. I absolutely need this kind of LG keyboard on my V60 and on my Velvet. But now I can, you can type the message out and it doesn't pop anything up on what's going on on your screen. This already, this, this right here, and for all the reasons that I love dual display on V60 and Velvet, sells me on wing super, super well. Split screen is like the feature people aren't using enough. Um, you, you know, like you see someone who has like picture in picture, like this split screen is so much better. So now having the ability to kind of like triple screen with little squares, ah, I love it. Oh, it's so good. Oh man. Ah, I, I love it. I, I love it when like you have a hope, like I hope that when I do something like split screen two apps and then go to the keyboard that that works and then it just works. Oh, they should just, it just works. Um, from Dwayne Mims, does the wing count as a mid-ranger? <laughs> Not at its launch price, I would say no. Um, so here's the deal. Um, Dwayne, and I think that's a, that's a great question, and it's a, it's a conversation that I think techies are long overdue. 
IMO, um, we need to stop looking at only price and chipset as like the determining factors for range. What range of phone is it, right? If someone comes to you and says, hey, I need to buy a laptop. You don't go, well, do you want to buy um, an entry level laptop, mid ranger laptop or a flagship laptop? Is it a flagship laptop? Is that what you want? We break this down. Like someone might need something kind of rugged. Someone might want something ultra sleek and is willing to compromise battery. Someone might want ARM and an always connected device, gaming, workstation. Uh, maybe it's a flip and fold, you know, hinge design. We pay for different features. So the internals on this would categorize it in one direction, but the price needs to justify having the engineering in a flip out screen. So now this becomes something else. This isn't the same phone that we've been playing with where you can make that categorization on, well, it's got this kind of Snapdragon, that makes it a mid-ranger. And I think, you know, like the Pixel 5 kind of contributes to that conversation in a way. It, it, you know, it's a little bit more for that 765, but you're getting a Google first experience for software and services. It's a little bit different than just mid-ranger or premium or entry i think we we need to start breaking these things up a little bit more it, it was why i got so cranky about blackberries back in the day I mean, the blackberry is too expensive well why well it only has a snapdragon 660. yeah but it's got this amazing keyboard not worth it for the money well then what would you replace it with well it just needs to charge less but then you can't have the keyboard <laughs> you know like once we kind of step outside of those boxes, it allows for experiments. And then we can start playing with other things. If if this shoots reliably, and, and I can capture 80 megabit per second, 4K video at 60 frames per second, with some of the best software stabilization this side of an iPhone, I kind of don't care. I kind of don't care if it's got an 865 I care that I now have a work and productivity device um, that's very unique and affords me some flexibility in how I'm moving with different, uh, playing with different software and services. Now, I want to see. <laughs> so it is using the same screen. So we are we are playing with the same displays that we've got on Velvet and on V60, the digitizer is intact. This has stylus support. The stylus pen support says, hey, welcome to the stylus. Um, uh, you know, tips and tricks, you can use your stylus pen with your phone. Your wing can also be a note competitor. Um, screen memo, swift text, done. I just wanna make sure if I do, and all the same shortcuts pop right up. Ah, uh, that makes me so happy. Um, oh, we should also see real quick. So it doesn't look like Digitizer supports the second display. So Digitizer for Active Pen on the top screen, but not on the bottom screen. So if we ever get to a point where apps are smart enough to start splitting this kind of stuff out, what I would love, I would love, is if a, like an Autodesk um, Sketchpad, you have all your tools and brushes and um, you know all of your layers. I would want all of that to go to the bottom screen, but it would be kind of annoying if I'm doodling away and I'm scribbling away and then I go down to, to tap something and then the pen doesn't work on the bottom screen. So some of those things, that might be a little, a little twitchy, but having the main stylus support on the big screen is phenomenal. <sighs> I'm just so real, because, okay. I'm trying to say like five things all at the same time and my brain is way faster than my mouth is. Um, seeing this kind of an experiment from afar makes me very anxious because of the reasons that I've listed before. Cases, durability, the rotation of the hinge. Does it still have the stylus support? Because I love being able to use the stylus again, blah, 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 blah. It's nice. It's very nice to have some of those concerns alleviated when you do get the device in your hand and it feels like a continuous part of the LG lineup. Because I like what LG has been building towards. This has been more of um, a conversation on modular phone design. 
V60 and Velvet, safe, pretty, powerful devices that can just be regular phones. And then you can pop them into a case or you can use them with a stylus. You can throw in a memory card. That's great. That's great. It can take you that extra step further. Wing, is, Wing was making me anxious because I don't want to lose those things that I've really liked on Velvet and V60 to get this hinge design. So that these are now sort of evolutionary steps from one to the next. It's very, it, it, I'm very relieved. <laughs> I'm very relieved. Um, yeah, so from JJ, the open um, with the gap, the unable to be seen wiped areas, that's what worries me about the wing. And especially for how this slides shut. Um, like, like for example, we're, we're not too far from the beach. I don't really take this crop of LGs to the beach. The, the, the phone that I would take with me was velvet in a case, but I wasn't going to bring uh, velvet in a regular case, not the dual screen case. But I wouldn't bring V60 or any of the dual displays. You know, a grain of sand is going to wreck that experience. I'm even more anxious about wing because I can't separate the phone from this dual screen hinge. A little grain of sand gets in here, and that's, that's going to be a bad day. Um, if it gets like you know stuck to the back and then you try and close it out, that's, that's a concern. You know, uh, why I feel like if you're one of those people, you're out there and you own like a real nice, fancy, expensive premium phone, especially now with foldables and, and twistables and dual displays, I would highly recommend one accessory being some kind of inexpensive entry level device. Like get yourself a wing for $9.99. And then also pick yourself up like a TCL 10L or a Stylo 6. <laughs> so that if you do something like, hey, I want to go out on a hike, but I'm worried that I'm going to be in really challenging conditions, I could bring my, my Weekender phone and, and that, that, that would be safer. Um, so yes, uh, JJ, I completely, I, I completely agree with that concern. I'm going to have to. So I'm going to have to take this out on a hiking trail, especially for the gimbal. Um, because I really want to give this a good work over. Um, but man, that's going to make me nervous. Oh, it's going to make me so nervous. Actually, I, I want to see real quick while I have you all here. So I've got the video. Um, I want to go into manual video and then I see if it does the same thing that V60 does. Yeah, it does. So there is no 4K60 on the ultra wide. The ultra wide shifts you down to 4K30. And then you have to manually go back in and reset the frame rate. So that's another thing I'm going to I'm going to like be real cranky and send a message to LG is like uh can you just make the frame rate persistent? Um I, I don't like if I'm in 60 and then I accidentally switch to the ultra wide, I'd really like it to go back to 60 when um, when I switch back to the main camera sensor. <laughs> and from Spike J Dragon, yeah, I appreciate you trying this. I wanted to be able to take notes while video plays, and no one has tried that. I thank you so much for supporting with super chats, and uh, you know, like it's a question that I definitely would have played with too. And and again, why I appreciate the uh, the support on this channel. Better still, it looks like you could probably even do like pen <laughs> pen notes on one third of this display and still have two you know two apps running at the same time. Zachary Webb does does Verizon have low band five G in your neighborhood? They're, they're, it's not firing. I, I didn't think they did. Um, like I said, I haven't been on a Verizon sim in a while, um, but it's still just showing four G four uh, G LTE. So I'm gonna have to go war driving for some 5G here around California. Uh, again, I'm, I'm not entirely sure near my neighborhood what might have um, you know, UWB. I'd love to play with something around LA where I can maybe test out some of these ultra high speed claims like we saw during the, uh, the iPhone 12 keynote. So I'm gonna have to kind of hunt around for that. Uh, near me, I'm pretty sure there's, there's only a handful of T-Mobile 5G towers. I don't think anyone else has started building out um, as far uh, as far away from LA proper as I am. Mm -hmm. 
And from, um, from Vazia Pupkin, my point exactly, I have a number of scenarios where opening the screen is not an option. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, uh, you know, in, in, a, in a way where even dual display might be a bit safer for like how, how you could keep this sort of in your pocket as a single screen phone and not have to open and close it. Every time we start playing with an experiment, I, I think it also means that we have to acknowledge that something different changes our behavior. Um, I'll be curious to see what, because I can't even really predict it at this point. It's, it's super new. I mean, I, it came with 50% charge on the battery and installing all my apps, it's down to 30. Um, I can't even predict what this is gonna do as like my daily driver interactions with the phone. Um, I, I really thought when I was playing with the Korean V50 that had a dual display, I really didn't think I was going to be on board. Like, oh, this is kind of cool. And, oh, you know what? It's fun to prop up a video, right? You know, I can prop up one screen. I can watch a video. That's kind of handy. I don't know. I'll probably, I'll probably keep it in the dual display case for limited, you know, when I know I'm going to want it. By the time we get to V60, um, I, my V60 almost never comes out of that dual display case. I, I mean, I'm just like, I am now multitasking on steroids. I, I, I'm, um, I'm obnoxious about how much crap I'm running from my phone all the time. I, I maybe might be the poster child of like, why you should have more reasonable interactions with your phone and don't be like that guy. Except be like me and get more use out of your phones. So I'll be curious to see how this changes how Wing kind of changes my expectations for, I'm on the go, I can't prop it up, so that's not, that's not one of the selling points here. But what, what is it gonna change? How am I gonna walk away from this and go like, oh, that's that thing that I do only on the Wing because the Wing has fill in the blank. And that's what I'm really kind of excited to see is, is like V60, took me by surprise how much I got into dual display after, even after the G8X. And I liked the G8X. The G8X was, was a really nice improvement, um, dual display over the V50. But V60 just kind of sealed the deal. Like it locked me in on saying, okay, this is something that I definitely value now. So now having a Note competitor that can also flip to be sort of a triple screen, a triple square screen, um, I'm very curious. I'm very curious what this is going to do to my brain. <laughs> um, doo -doo -doo -doo. Uh, excuse me, from Root Night 5, I'd say a problem with split screen on normal phones is that if you need to type something, the keyboard usually eats all the screen space, so it's awkward in some situations. So Root Night... Um, I actually, I, I just shot a video that probably won't be out um, maybe for a couple weeks as Techtober. There's just so much to cover um, this October. And I'm still hoping to maybe get some, some time with like a OnePlus 8T. I'm not on the early reviewer list, but I'd still like to play with that phone too. Um, this, this really kind of landed with the Xperia, uh, the first Xperia 1, where... One of the main things that I like to have up on a screen is like a YouTube video or Netflix. Now I'm streaming a lot of Disney Plus because um, Lex has a lot of stuff that she likes to watch on Disney Plus. But for my own viewing habits, it's like I almost always have something kind of going on in the background. Podcast, YouTube, Netflix, something. I kind of need to work with some low-level distraction that keeps a part of my brain engaged so that I can actually get work done. As phone screens have followed the Sony model of going more cinema aspect ratio, having a video up at the top of your I, I, well, here let me let me actually split screen this back again so I can kind of show you on the wing, um, even just using it as like a, a regular phone. Let me go back to YouTube, multi window, <laughs> and then let me pull up. Oh, let me pull up a, a silly game, um, but I want my video back. Some Gadget guy. Good. 
Oh, did you know that some gadget guy is live on YouTube right now? And also on Twitch. But don't tell anybody. Um, when you... Skip ads. When you split screen now, and you've got a quarter of the screen docked for a window, this down here is very close to a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. It's not exact. It again, it depends from phone to phone to phone. And I believe we're, what, 20.5 by 9 on LGs. But you've got, a, this, is a, this is a normal phone. Like, it's really close to having, like, a Galaxy S7 underneath the video. So you, so you really haven't lost, or, or when, um, I guess, let me show you with, like, a, something that I can type out. I, I, I don't have anything set up yet. It's still just installing everything. Um, so that when the keyboard pops up, that's not too far from what a normal 16 by 9 phone would have shown with the keyboard up on the screen. And you still have a video playing <laughs> in the upper quarter. So when we, one of the benefits, one of the big perks for these new super tall, skinny, skinny phones, these, uh, these tall boys, as I like to call them, is split screening becomes a lot more functional. It's, oh, wait a minute. 5G just kicked over. There is a 5G Verizon tower. Oh, no, it just went back to 4G LTE. <laughs> the Gadget Lab is in, like, the worst area for reception. I get terrible reception. But, um, okay, so somewhere near me, somewhere somewhere around there, there is, there, there is a 5G tower. Um, but, sorry, short story, incredibly long. I feel like split screen kind of got pushed aside, and it, got, it, it became harder to find, right, with, like, Android 10... Um, even with Android 9, like you have to like long press when you're in multitasking view and some phones would have a shortcut where if you long press the, the multitasking button, but you don't have that when you go to gestures, blah, 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 blah. Get your Android friends to try this again because normal phone aspect ratio underneath and docked video, even on my non dual display phones, I am using that like crazy. I'll have a little video playing at the top of the screen and I'll be browsing Reddit underneath and I've got my headphones plugged in or I've got some earbuds in. It's great. It, I mean, I'm already overusing my phones. Like I'm, I'm at the extreme end of how much use can I get out of this screen in every interaction. But I think that's a big perk and I think it works way better than picture in picture. I do not like the implementation of a postage stamp that always seems to be in the way of the other app that I'm trying to use. And the compromise of just docking a video at the top, not a bad compromise. I mean, I think it works really well. Um, boop, 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 boom. <laughs> That's amaze balls. <laughs> From Zachary Webb. You could have four apps open at once with picture in picture. Yeah, but would you wanna? <laughs> I mean, when it's so good just to split screen and then like have that third. I, I mean, I, I feel like I'm good at three. I feel like I'm good at proper three apps all on screen at the same time. I haven't felt that need in that situation or even on like my dual display phones where I like, you know, I gotta have one more. I gotta go to four. Like, that hasn't happened to me yet. <laughs> Ooh, Shiny Mutank is saying, try desktop mode to see if LG changed any UI. Um, let me see. Because I just recently set up another um, PC um, uh, television, uh, the, the Azul. Um, I'm working on doing a review for that. It's this cute little stick of a, of a Windows PC. I don't have another HDMI cable in here. Give me one second. I do have my adapter, and I'm going to pull this out of my camera back here. So who wants to see if there's a desktop mode on this, uh, on this Velvet? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? I just recently watched Ferris Bueller again. Um, let's see. 
And let's get that out of the way. All right. Oh, and I did this on the Elgato. So it gets a little weird whenever the video signal gets interrupted. So I've got to make sure that this is putting something out. But it doesn't look like there's video out. Mm hmm. So we might not have any kind of desktop mode on this. We might not even have screen mirroring. Mm hmm. So it's it it will it, it's recognizing the dongle enough to charge through. But I don't see. It's telling me about dual apps, install app notifications. There are permissions requested for my email. Um, allow, I guess. So it doesn't look like there is video output on this. So whatever LG is doing for this this dual display, how, how it functions as a display, we might not have any kind of setting. So I'm going to try and, and flip over to my Elgato, but this might, this might bork. And, and the last time it borked like this, it actually did tank. Actually, you know what? I'm not going to use Elgato. Hold on. Hold on. Doing it live. Was not prepared for this kind of a setup. The last time my Elgato borked, it locked up my OBS. That's why I'm being a little cagey about this, because I don't want to have to just like kill the stream, but I have another one of those cheap USB adapters. And if that borks, I think we should be okay. I just like saying bork. Anyone else like the word bork? I think it's a fun word. I know, Dave Burns, you're saying use the next doc. I know you're saying that, but it's, it's way over there. <laughs> so I want to see if it borks. <laughs> All right, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're plugging it in. It's charging. And uh, cheap HDMI. I don't think it's doing it. All right. That is no confirmation, but it doesn't seem to work that way. Okay. I'm going to get the next stock. All right, Dave Burns. If that is your real name. <laughs> but before before I do this, I am gonna put the uh, the Elgato back together, <laughs> just so I can plug the other camera back in. Do do do. Ba -dum -bum -bum -bum. Ba -da -dum -bum -ba -dum. All right, and next doc. Now, the next dock does get a little twitchy with LG phones, so it might take me two or three tries on this first one just to kind of get the, the cable dance all right. But we'll see. Again, this is just a, a, dis, a, 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 a live stream setup discovery of all of the things that the LG Wing can and can't do. Um, is that working? Yes, good, okay. Behold the awesome power of the next dock. It's so bad. Anyone? It's so bad? No? Anyone? Um, get this. Turn this on. Next dock is ready to connect. Unlock it. At least this is the kind of process that we do on the V60. It's charging. Yeah, I'm going to have to play with this a bit more. This might not have any kind of dual display. I mean dual display. It might not have any kind of um, second, second screen or output screen support. Mm -hmm. We'll give it one more try here. Let me uh, power cycle the, the next dock. The very first time I set up V60, it did not like connecting to the next dock, and I kind of had to do a dance where I plugged it in two or three times, but it eventually did see that there was another display. But it's not... Oh, wait, wait! Connected to second screen! <laughs> it did it! Okay, we have desktop mode confirmed. Um, let me see if it's more like the Velvet's. Although, now the mouse 
the mouse isn't tracking. I'm going to have to play with this. Again, doing this totally live. Um, yeah. Or is the touch screen recognizing? So it, it's firing it up. I, I've got to play with this a little bit more. And again, with this being such early software for, for the release on this, I'm not too surprised. Um, but at least this is encouraging that something is working. So I can, I can figure out how to make it work from here. Folks, we did it together. You and me, I feel like we, we persevered. Um, it was, that was a, definitely a, a, an ordeal, a trial. I, I'm, you know, I don't know that I would have been able to do it without you. So uh, I'm glad that you were along for that wild and crazy ride. <laughs> something worked. As long as something is putting out a video signal, that means I can figure out how to make it work all the way from there. Um, so one of the cool things, uh, Dave Burns and JJ are asking, um, the LG desktop mode is now sort of automatically applied. Um, on Android 10, there is a Google desktop mode. It's super basic. I mean, it's just a backbone that you plug into another monitor and then a very simple canvas that's barely functional pops up and you can kind of use it like a proper computer. Samsung DeX is very customized software to get you a much smoother PC style experience. LG is using the Google backbone, but with sort of a, a launcher on top of it for additional functionality. So it's not as stark as the Google solution. And now LGs just fire it up by default. Um, you don't have to go into developer settings and know which settings to manipulate. Like, it just gives you the option. And then in your notification tray, you can say, I want it to be um, desktop mode or I want it to be screen share. So as long as there's some kind of video output, we can work with that. We, we can make that work. <laughs> oh, and from Zach Webb, I might actually now that I've disconnected it, because the desktop mode locked on my next dock, I might need to reboot the phone. Um, actually, let me just go ahead and do it because it gets, this stuff gets weird. I mean, you're asking the phone to do a lot and Google, oh, I've got it upside down. The fingerprint sensor's on the bottom of the phone. Um, if you hold the phone upside down, it can't scan your fingerprint. <laughs> um, power off and restart. And actually, let me get this plugged in because I am I am using this pretty heavy and draining that battery. I need to find a charge cable. Oh, I got a charge cable with a magnetic uh, adapter for an LG dual display right there. And plug that back in. All right. Whew. Man, this has been exciting. I'm very excited about this. <laughs> um, from Charles Monroe, use the blue bamboo stylus on the screen. I mean, it, I mean, that should work. My blue bamboo is just a capacitive stylus. So it's not, a, um, it's not an active pen, but it should work. Yep. Like, oh, I can't show you my super secret code. One, two, three, four, five. So this won't work as well. Um, and actually, do I have it set to the right? Let me flip that on and activate. So if I do that, yeah, it's a little stuttery. Actually, I don't know when was the last time I charged this. Um, yeah, but it's working. Like I have to make it a bit more deliberate, but for how beautiful like the active pens are and how sleek that is, um, I, if you're looking at a current LG, V60, Velvet, Wing, I, I mean, just get, get the bamboo. Or, or if you're in the United States, here's the hilarious bit. This is the Lenovo Active Stylus. See? Lenovo. You can see the little Lenovo logo right there. If you go to eBay... There are a bunch of these that have been returned by Lenovo customers because the batteries die. So inside these, these pens, you have to unscrew it, and there's a quad A battery that goes into this back end piece right there. This, they're not rechargeable. You have to get a quad A battery. And they last for a long time, but if you don't know that, this gets returned for being non-functional and then it, it has to get refurbished. And so you can pick these up for like 15 bucks. I think the, the Wacom is better. 
but I think when you shop this full retail, it's about a $50 pen. For most of the same functionality, it's just a little bit lighter. It feels a little cheaper. You can probably get this for about 15. So do with that information what you will. You'll have to get a new battery for it, but a bunch of people are apparently returning these because they don't understand that the battery needs to be replaced. And then they just get sold on eBay with depleted batteries. Like the, I, I've got two um, that I bought as backups. I got two of them, they both had batteries, the batteries were dead, popped in new batteries, they worked great. So I would recommend those of you considering an LG and you wanna save a couple bucks, because you know phones aren't cheap these days, uh, it might be worth checking out your local eBay to see if there are any uh, refurbed um, uh, active stylus pens that you can get instead. So over like a 20 or $30 capacitive stylus, I would highly recommend getting some kind of active pen instead. Sorry, I'm just catching up to the live chat. You guys are like way ahead of me here. Um, from Chris Lopez, Juan, what chipset is in the phone? I'm pretty sure it's a 765, but I think my... Um, oh, you know what? Hold on. I got to do this. So it really bugs me when the display is set to um, home screen that has all of your apps just installed on the home screen. So select home. Home with separate app list. Okay. And let's apply that. And now I can swipe this up. And then it also really bugs me that LGs don't automatically alphabetize. So then you have to sort apps by name alphabetically. And then I can go into device info and uh, SOC is the Snapdragon 765G. So it's the 765 with eight gigs of RAM and uh, total is 256 gigabytes of storage. But obviously we know that that's, there's a big partition that's cut out for updates and then also how you measure Giggle bits is different. Um, so uh, I currently have uh, 202 gigs free. So actually, I also didn't even look. I don't know. Let me peel off the case here for just a second, because I don't know if this if this has a memory card. Oh, there is a little bit of adhesive on that. That's what that peeling off thing was. So this isn't just, um, this is a, a mild sort of a, just a sticky pad adhesive, but I don't see where the SIM card tray might be. The phone's gonna get a little angry because I'm popping out its SIM card, but it's a wide SIM tray. So I would imagine that we still do have memory card access. So 256 and you can pop in another memory card. Um, I'm gonna pull the one out of my V60 so I can keep all my video files uh, the same. <laughs> I just got, we're, we're, my speakers do not like Verizon's, um, <laughs> Verizon signal there. <laughs> That's scary and funny. Um, let me put this case back on, kind of stick it back in. I'm, I'm very, I'm very happy with this overall presentation. I am very happy with this as a first experience. I really want to try and use this a bit harder just to see if like, you know, as you use it, if there's going to be any weird like screen flex, because man, it is just shocking. Like how thin that full OLED is right there. Like that's nuts. That's crazy. I love that phones are getting crazy again. I love it. Um, from Wrecker1311, uh, the fingerprint sensor should be on the back. I really wish we had, I mean, again, going back to the Pixel, I mean, if I could put a fingerprint sensor like right there, oh, that'd be so clean. I would love having rear fingerprint sensors back. Um, JJ, do you charge your phones 100% every single time? Do you try to stagger charging unless it is overnight? So uh, I, my, my compromise on charging is actually now I don't charge at night. As long as the phone has about 30% battery remaining, most of these, especially these phones with larger batteries, I just let them sit overnight. 
So they're not constantly at like that trickle charge at the upper tier. Um, I, like why I love Sony phones is that you can kind of set a hard cap or set a window where you want the phone to really charge and then be ready for you when you wake up on an alarm. Um, I, you know, I, I don't really worry about it too much these days because I'm not out around town as much as I used to be. Like if I run out to the grocery store for a quick, like I just need to get something and I'm wearing a mask and my phone's at 40%, that's plenty. I mean, especially if my phone's like a V60. My phone's a V60 and it's at 40%, I know I've got like a day and a half of use, <laughs> right? Like I'm still, I'm still good, I'm real good. But even on my OnePluses, like the OnePlus 8 Pro, I mean, if I'm starting to get down to like 20%, I'll plug it in for a bit and I'll let it kind of just top it off. I, I, I'm not sitting there making sure that every phone is maximized to 100% anymore. We've got plenty of room. We've got a good buffer. So it's fine if, like, you know, I, and it's fine leaving the house for a day and only seeing like 50% on the battery for a lot of these phones. Uh, all right. Um, from from Javion Brown, Javion, Javion. Uh, I still think Samsung does the pen the best. I mean, yeah, S Pen is obviously the leader. Um, but where we're at with LG is pretty close. The actual pen functionality is really close. You know, pop-up screen magnifiers, doodle notes, being able to draw GIFs, being able to screen share and cut and edit, pressure sensitivity, palm rejection, like it's really close. Where S Pen obviously takes the lead is in all the wireless stuff. So when you want your S Pen to be like a remote shutter, that's pretty handy. That is pretty cool. In fact, with the most recent update on my Tick Watch, bringing back remote shutter functionality, like, oh, Oh yeah, that is good on an on an S Pen. I do like that. I can kind of prop the phone and set up a shot. Um, I've got like uh, Gorilla Pods and stuff like that where I can kind of like, you know, set the phone up, walk away, take the shot remotely, stuff like that. Yeah, super super cool. But I gotta say, when it comes to the actual like functionality, LG got real close, and it's it's a whackum. I mean, like this should work with a handful of other PC manufacturers like Lenovo's that's that's kind of nice like if you wanted some synergy you don't have to worry about like I have an S Pen on my phone and then a Wacom on my PC you could tie those together um, and from Charles Monroe I rep Bamboo all the time at work sold a lot of LG's thanks to you ah uh, well, I'm, I'm glad I could help you know again some of those conversations where you kind of get a sense that someone might be you, know, you talk to someone you're like oh Oh, you might be an LG person. You might be a Motorola person. That rare person who's like all about their photography. You might be an Xperia person and you just don't know it yet. Hmm. It's fun when you can kind of like point someone to that kind of uh, kind of experience. Um, Javian asking, does LG make tablets? They do. I think they're only making budget gear now. I don't think they're making any premium grade tablets. If you go to the LG website, go look up their tablets and come on back because I think you'll have a nice little chuckle <laughs> about what they're doing. Um, oh, um, from, Fels from Nick, Nick Felstone. Hey Juan, when your stream is ending, could you give a shout out to our boy Dave stream? He's going to be streaming Halo tonight. Dave Burns, are you going to be doing some Halo streaming? Because if you are on the Twitch, um, our buddy Dave is going to be streaming some, some Twitch. So... Uh, um, definitely check out his stream. I, it, it, someone, if you're on, um, or on my discord, um, I, I don't think I have, I don't think I have it up or, um, someone shoot me, uh, David's Twitch and I'll uh, drop it as a link here. Um, do that someone and I will capitulate anyone. Anyway. Um, let me wrap up some of these uh, comments here, and then I, I got to get out and start using this stuff. I still need to like dig in and do a whole bunch of stuff on Pixel Five. I need to. Sh I'm, I'm thinking one of the first comparisons I might do Pixel Five versus uh, uh, the LG Velvet, and now have some better competition. But I'm thinking T-Mobile Velvet, where it's Pixel Five on a 765 versus the T-Mobile Velvet on a Dimensity. Hmm. I don't know that that's nerdy enough. I might need to find something else to make it 
ultra nerdy. Uh, oh, let me go through a few more of these. Uh, Walt Samaristas asking any software updates available and what security patch is it on? Um, it didn't find any updates. System updates, check for new system update. We are checking for new updates for your LG, please wait. No new system updates available, so that's fine. But let me see about the phone, software info, and it's running the September Android security patch. That's not too far off. That's pretty close. And LG's been better this year about sticking to kind of a two month um, update window. Like my V60 just recently got um, a security patch update. Um, my Korean Velvet did, but the Korean update notes are in Korean. Um, so I wasn't sure, and I kind of clicked through it too fast. I wasn't really sure what what was in that update. Um, from Oblivious, hey man, I want to ask you if you would rate the iPhone SE 2020 as a better overall camera phone compared to the G8X. No, I would not. Nope. No, I wouldn't. Um, in terms of video, they're pretty close. Uh, you, you will have a time limit on G8X 4K at 60 frames per second, but if you lock your shutter in the manual video control app on the G8X, I think you end up with a higher quality video because you don't end up with that, that blur shift that a lot of phones have when the exposure changes. So when you move from like dark to light conditions, you're walking through a shadow and you come out in sunlight. As phones adjust the exposure, your frame rate, your, your shutter speed, excuse me, not your frame rate, your shutter speed changes. Some of those frames get blurrier. And when they get a little bit blurrier, the phone has a harder time cropping and adjusting for the software stabilization. That alone makes the G8X for me a better buy. And then on top of that, you do get an ultra wide camera I think that's pretty handy. The selfie shooter, I think, is better on the LG. Apple's software processing is a little juicier for the HDR, but I think the cameras overall, G8X over iPhone SE 2020. Then you also get a headphone jack, and if you want, you can plug in a microphone or get like a, you know, like earbuds and get the mic on your earbuds and run commentary from a separate mic from the rest of the phone. I don't know, I'm just like, I'm, I'm definitely a little biased because I like to make things with my phones, but I don't think LG got enough credit last year for being the first manufacturer to hit software stabilized 60 frames per second 4K video and that they could do it with full manual controls. So that's my, my bias is I would say if you care about making things, I would side LG G8X over iPhone SE. If anyone disagrees with me in, in the comments, please list where. And, and that's fine, because you'd want the counterpoint to that from someone who was maybe more on Team Apple. Um, doo -doo -doo. Um, from Zachary Webb, yeah, I had H um, hardware device info. Um, I'm pretty sure the, the, the camera modules are some, oh wait, no, there is the extra ultra wide. Hold on, let's see real quick. Um, camera, yeah, it looks like we're using mostly Samsung cameras, just like, uh, just like Velvet. Um, it registers a 16 megapixel, eight megapixel, 13 megapixel. So yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that we're, what we're looking at are those. And again, they rate at, a, if these are the quad bear, well, I can look that up real quick on the camera too. It's a quad bear resolution, photo size, 64. So I'm pretty sure we're looking at the same 64 megapixel sensor. When you deal with quad bear sensors, the raw assumes pixel binning. So it actually, the, the, the camera's firmware will spit out a 16 megapixel raw by combining four of the adjacent pixels together. So even though it's, a, it's technically correct that you have a 64 megapixel sensor, you have 64 million dots, how they're arranged and combined is really more of a benefit for the quad pixel binned resolution, 16 megapixel images. 
And just like the V60, we're, we're looking at Samsung sensors there. Samsung's ISO cells with uh, that pixel binning have been surprisingly good. Um, I still feel like every manufacturer needs tweaking. Um, some of the HDR gets a little overprocessed. Some of the vibrance gets like a bit aggressive, but the ability to better capture HDR images because each individual subpixel can pick up a different exposure value, very nice. So that's pretty good. Um, <laughs> Wrecker. Compare the LG Wing to the LG G5. I probably won't. Okay. <laughs> um, let, me, let me just catch up on these and then we should probably start wrapping this up. Um, from Haley's comment, you should turn on the LG 3D sound engine uh, and hear the difference on your Bluetooth speakers and in your car. Um, I like the 3D sound engine. Um, I'm a bit of a purist and a snob where I, on, on like a V60, quad DAC, really nice headphones. I want music that's been mixed. I want to hear what the, the artist intended. I'm that snob. I'm that, that jerk. But for some of these other things, and especially like, I want to play with it a bit more for like gaming. Um, so that's, that's kind of what, I, where I feel like some of this spatial audio could be a big perk. And again, we want to say like, oh, well, Apple just, just started doing spatial audio. Yeah. Yeah, LG's been working with, like, DTS for years, and their own sound engine is really good. It's nice that Apple finally joined us, but we've been here for a while. <laughs> um, oh, Dave Burns is going to stream ODST Firefight. I am, pro David, I promise I am trying to wrap this up. I, I don't know if I can. Let me see if I can copy this link. No one sent me your, your Twitch channel, man. Um, here, I'll drop this, see if this, this works in the live chat. I don't even know if I can drop links on my own YouTube stream. We'll, we'll see if that gets weird. Um, but that's my buddy David. He's, he's been putting out some fun Twitch streams. He's trying to build up his, his channel metrics, his channel views. He wants to start doing some, some wacky streams and some, some guest streams. If, if you want to watch some Halo, he would be a fun one to watch flop around and fail at some Halo. Um, um, from Zachary Reb, interesting that they're using ISOCELL instead of Sony when LG used to always use Sony. So what's interesting is watching the arms race. We're talking different resolutions and different features. And if you haven't read up on how quad bear image sensors work, this was actually a huge shot in the arm for Samsung. Where mobile photography went, excuse me, where mobile photography went and what we focused on, this HDR, I mean, extended dynamic range kinds of processing, Sony is very good at it. Sony is excellent at it. But it gave Samsung the ability to kind of catch up on these super megapixel dense sensors. And now we've got an interesting fight. Larger sensor sizes and different um, pros and cons where if you want the absolute best autofocus, maybe you have to sacrifice some of those juicier HDR properties and you want to go with the sensor that's got crazy, ridiculous, dual pixel PDAF. You know, so it's not, uh, we're, we're nowhere near there being a clear, this is the company that gives us the best. Oh, no, no, no. This is a very rich fight between Sony and Samsung right now. For the more core photography focus, I still think Sony has the edge. But for all the techie computational stuff, Samsung is doing some really interesting, really interesting work. Um, all right, let's see. Uh, from, from the Ninonix, what dongle, if any, do you use with the Duo? What I was using is um, the Fio. So this is the BTR5. It works as both a Bluetooth or as a USB-C audio, um, audio interface. Uh, it does now properly support uh, TRRS uh, headset mics. So you can plug this in. You don't have to use the mics that are built into the casing. You can use a regular uh, cabled headset and the mic will pick up. So my Surface is over with TK, but I didn't give him this. I gave him the Surface dongle. Not as good. 
Um, this is way better. Uh, the amp is surprisingly good for such a, such a little battery powered unit. But at the same time, while I was coming home from the dentist, this also showed up. My chair is really creaky. And this is the Fio Q3. And now this is a proper external THX certified amp um, to connect. And it, this should also be a USB-C uh, pass-through amp as well. So I'm really excited to, to break this bad boy out. And if I absolutely don't have some kind of quad DAC on my phone, maybe it's Fio's gig for really juicing up some headphone playback. Because um, like I said, I've been, I've been really liking their little Bluetooth solutions. So it was time for me to step up to one of their big boy mobile, big boy portable amps. And this, these new THX certified amps are, are ridiculous. The output is so loud. Um, planner magnetics that are just like, go to town. You got plenty of headroom. Do svidania. Um, um, from CH Gadgets, is that video brochure a tablet inside? I don't think it is. I really think this is this is like a screen because it's just cardboard. Like they put a screen in like a cardboard wrapper, and there's like a little magnet sensor right here on the side. So I'm gonna take this apart because I gotta. <laughs> but this is absolutely crazy that that's what they put in. Um, uh, yeah, I, like so impressed. I'm I'm so excited that that's what LG actually threw in there. Um, from Zachary Reb, GSM Arena seems to look down on Samsung sensors when Xiaomi uses them, but it looks like LG has done enough tuning to make the ISO cells look and work better. So I, I, I want to put that out there. Um, on the Snapdragon powered version of the Velvet, we're using a 48 megapixel um, half inch sensor. And opposite the V60, I still think we've got some room to tweak. And I think every manufacturer, these sensors are so new. I mean, we really only started using them in earnest last year. And companies like OnePlus, the OnePlus 8 Pro camera sensor is, is I think it's the best. It is so formidable. It, you get raw images out of the OnePlus 8 Pro that almost look like other phones' night mode images. I mean, just crazy, crazy hardware. But when we start messing with the pixel layout, and you have groups of four pixels, which means individual sub-pixels can be as far as five dots across, how you demosaic that how you treat them as individual exposure settings or how you treat them as, as um, color reproduction gets real weird. That's not normally how camera, digital cameras function. So even though we're, we're, we're two years into using these types of sensors, no, we got room. I think every manufacturer has room to kind of tweak what they're trying to accomplish. And, and a company like Xiaomi, while they make these really great, inexpensive, powerful options, I don't feel you really get the same refinement. You know, their attention to those details in a camera app, they're probably pulling the quad bend down into some kind of raw where it just treats those four pixels as one larger surface area. And they're just using the same algorithms that they've used on those older 12 megapixel shooters just to kind of pump out an image. And then you just throw on some HDR, some filter, and it gets real juicy and it's supposed to be real pretty. Um, a company like LG, I feel, has put a lot more thought into what they're doing with all of that extra pixel level data. But even LG, I feel like we're only two years into these. Or actually, LG is only one year into these, into these sensors. There's room. There's definitely room for refinement across the board from all those manufacturers out there. <laughs> oh, Sparta Tech Review is saying the 3D sound engine is great for speakers. Okay, I really do need to play with it a bit more because I... I don't know that I've really plugged. Oh, you know what? Let me try that again. If it if it'll play nice with some uh, Bluetooth speakers, because I've got like those one mores and the uh, um, those uh, electrostatic. What what? Who made that? Thank you. Um, the Travolo. I, I could play around with something like that. That could be kind of fun. 
<laughs> From Russell Nash, I've never used the built-in music player on my V60. I really like Jet Audio. I really think LG's, um, one of the reasons why I was using LG's built-in music player for, for so long was because it had a really good support for OneDrive. So I've got my music collection backed up on Microsoft OneDrive, and that, that kept me going. Um, but if I'm not going to use the LG music player, it's, it's USB Audio Player Pro. I, I, I just like the layout, I'm familiar with it, and you know you're getting like kind of the, 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 the best sort of um, removing Android from the equation in how music might be resampled if you have high bitrate FLAC files or I'm not that kind of guy, but I've got viewers who are all about like DSD. If you want that, that bit level perfect reproduction of that digital audio, I would consider checking out USB Audio Player Pro. Um... Let's, uh, dun, 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 dun. from uh, Ronaldo Taylor Bay, would you still recommend getting the V60 or just go with the Velvet or the Wing? I, you know, any phone that was launched at the beginning of the year, I think still gets a strong recommendation. Um, what, what we're all kind of a little precious about right now, we're closing out 2020. This is the big surge, right? The second half of the year, we've got the new iPhone announcement. Um, the Note was just recently um, launched, the Fold 2. Techtober is all about like that last burst of manufacturers finally getting um, their distribution in line for holiday sales in the end of the year. Um, any phone that was out at the beginning of the year, if it got a strong recommendation at the beginning of the year, I think it's still a solid option today. It's, it's just price performance. And I really feel like we as techies need to do a better job of categorizing what we're looking for. I would not recommend a Velvet to the same person as a V60. Even within LG's umbrella of manufacturing and they share so much of the same DNA and you can get dual display cases for both, I'd still be positioning those as different solutions for different consumers. So it, it really does come down to what is it that you're looking for, what are you trying to accomplish, and what pros and cons are you happy to live with? And from there, I think you get a, a much better fit for your specific needs than just someone saying, well, I mean, the V60 did better for my YouTube SEO, so go with that one. That one's more popular. That's not what we were really looking for. <laughs> oh, Goran, I thought the Apple spatial audio was really underwhelming and overhyped, but I broke my right AirPod a week after the update. <laughs> Oh, buddy, I'm not the biggest fan of AirPods, but it's just, it always hurts my heart, you know, like new features, you've got this gadget, you've got your earbuds, you're, you're working them, and then if something like that borks or breaks, like it's just sad. Uh, it's just a bummer, man. Hopefully you've got them replaced with something else. It's fun. Um... <laughs> Hobby on Brown, do you remember the Galaxy S4 Zoom? I want that from an LG V series. I mean, I've got, it's, it's over there in the bookshelf. I've got the Galaxy camera and, um, no, it is the Zoom. Because it was K series? Was it the Galaxy K International that had the big camera lens on it? Um, oh, across the podcast, Sam and Matt saying, hey, hey. Hey, hey, Sam and Matt. Um, I'm I'm way behind on on your guys' chat. I'm trying I'm trying to to catch up because I do need to end this in my family. We're gonna try and go jet out and get some dinner. Um, <laughs> Russell Nash, I wonder how long it'll be before someone makes an LG wing video where they test it like a paper airplane. I would, uh, Jerry rig everything. I mean, he was pretty kind. I mean, he he disassembled it, but you know, I was expecting some more like how am how am I gonna break this thing? Um, <laughs> uh, Brian Allen, LG's music player is great if you have your own FLAC or MP3s. The ESS Sabre DAC doesn't work on some apps, but you can also change bit rates and codecs for the 3.5 millimeter Bluetooth and the developer options. I, I, the only thing that made me a little twitchy this year, LG backed off of some of their partnerships. So, like I was saying, DSD files and different types of high bit rate audio formats weren't natively labeled in the LG Music app on the V60. 
where you would have that kind of extra, like, you, we're, we're talking audio file specialty formats and codecs. V50 had it, V60 didn't. So that, that was a minor step back. But I, I, I only rock flax. My, my music collection is backed up in flack. I've been fine. A 24-bit flack on the LG music player, been great. I haven't had any complaints. Um, do, 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 do. Uh, bum, 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 bum. Reading through the comments. Blue Malicious, I've missed most of this, but you, uh, you were talking about the box screen remind me of when you got the Nokia 9 preview and how excited you were. Oh, my Nokia 9. Actually, I need to pull that one out again. I ran a bunch of like the security patches and updates. Apparently, if you have a Nokia 9, you're not going to be getting Android 11 until the end of second quarter next year, which doesn't make me feel nice about the Nokia 9 being an Android 1 device and one of the more expensive Nokias of recent memory. <laughs> yeah, shiny Mu Tank. That is kind of a bummer too. That that is actually one of the few times I take my V60 out. He's saying his biggest downside is not being able to use the desktop mode while the V60 is inside the dual screen case. So apparently, I need to make it work. But Wing is not going to have that problem. Um, I'm really going to be anxious to see though, like. If I flip the wing out, is that going to make the display weird for the phone also processing a desktop mode? Because at that point, the phone is powering three different displays. Android is already not good at dual display. So you have to do a lot of custom work to make dual display work. Like the Surface, very different experience than an LG, right? There are very different solutions for making that happen. So I'm going to be really, it's going to be really funny if I'm using a next dock and I've got the desktop mode going and I flick the screen out and everything just goes <laughs> because the phone doesn't know what to do, powering three displays all at the same time. Uh, from JJ4084, I'm, uh, for, for my streaming solutions, I'm mostly using Tidal. But then I also back up, like I said, I, I've got my FLAC collection, and all of that's on my NOS. So um, it, it, a lot of it will just live on the device, but if I absolutely want an album, um, I'll log in to my network attached storage and download it there. But if I'm streaming something, it's probably Tidal. Mm -hmm. Oh, interesting. They're saying the LG Wing supports LG Pay. I did not look. Let's see. Come on. Excuse me. I'm trying to drink a lot of water because I've been doing so much talking this week. Uh, I'm seeing the contacts and messaging app, LG Health, the HD audio recorder. I don't see LG Pay on the Verizon LG Wing. Give me one more second. I'm just going to kind of look through. I'll try and I'll try and like install it or see if I can sideload it. Um, given different carriers' relationships with payment services, I actually kind of wouldn't be surprised if the Verizon variant of an LG phone didn't support LG's uh, MagStripe payment uh, solution. But I'll try and I'll try and sideload it, and I'll see if I can get LG Pay working there. Mm -hmm. Lots of comments from Ant X. The V70 is going to be a freaking beast. Well, we're not going to get a V. I don't know what it's going to be called. I'm sure we're going to get a replacement for, for the V series. But like we lost the G series and now we have the Velvet, there's going to be a new name. But the wing is at least giving me some hope that the spirit of the V series is going to live on as a content creator, productivity, powerful phone. Um, again, I, we saw it first on the Pixel 5, credit where credit's due. But 4K 60 frame per second on these Qualcomm mid-rangers is insane. 
that that it's the same video processing capabilities that we see on the V60 with that 80 megabit per second data rate is is very encouraging that we're going to continue to see like I want to see a V series replacement on next generation Snapdragon 875 with all the bells and whistles and please I hope they keep the quad DAC would be would be real nice um <laughs> from Mawasho309. I came here for the pun. <laughs> it was the best I could come up with. We're winging it. <laughs> um, uh, LG Pay is on the Play Store. I mean, uh, let me let me see if I can install it. I know it updates through the Play Store, but I don't know that you can just install LG Pay on any phone. I, I don't need to sideload it. It's installing. Well, I'll play with it. We'll see if there is MagStripe hardware in here. Because, again, there could be a Verizon variant where because of ultra-wideband, you can't have an antenna or the coils for, for that Stripe payment. But let's see. Allow. 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 It seems to be working. I guess through Verizon, they just don't want it installed. But that's it's on. Um, let's skip, get started, and it's going to have me sign in with my LG account. So, yeah, okay. I guess that wasn't as difficult a, a, a verification as I thought it was going to be. Um, all right. It's, it's, it's already 530 uh, here at Pacific Time, and uh, my buddy Dave Burns is, is streaming Halo if you want to go and check out his stream. Um, but I, I'm, I want to wrap this up. I want to wrap this up repeating my plea from the beginning of this stream. LG, OnePlus, Samsung, uh, Microsoft, all, all of these other companies that are, that are putting together kits for reviewers to dig into. I am a reviewer. I really appreciate that attention to um, in, uh, the ecosystem. I really enjoy cracking open this larger box and getting the full representation of what your phone can accomplish. My plea is start selling that as a limited edition for your hardcore fans. And I think you'll get some traction there. You know, um, I, 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 th I, I think it would be a, a nice gesture to the communities of people that appreciate your products. Because, I mean, telling you, you're, I was anxious about getting a wing thinking like, oh, it's just going to be this phone. But, oh, you included the case. How helpful is that? You got this cute little, like, video brochure thing that I can, like, show off. And, and like, it explains functionality on the phone that you can't always accomplish on the device. And I just feel like someone shopping a, a, a premium price product especially with everything that's going on in the world right now, like this, this money, like that matters. I think they dig that too. I think you, you'd sell that out really quickly. Um, so, so I know OnePlus experimented a little, they had pop-up stores and stuff like that, but like Sony, you know, like you want to bundle an Xperia with awesome Sony headphones and a PlayStation controller and the little mount so that you can combine them all. And there's just something so fresh about opening the box, and this is what the LG lifestyle would look like. This is what the Sony lifestyle would look like. I, I, I know, I know it's, it's something that people would, would appreciate. I, I have this feeling that because San, uh, Apple, excuse me, because Apple took the charger out of the box, and they're trying to hide behind this like, oh, it's for the environment, now buy all of these other accessories that you didn't need to buy, and they all come in their own packaging environment but I have this feeling that because Apple did made this move we can count on Samsung making fun of it today and then copying that move in six months and then I think we can also be pretty confident that if Samsung makes this move then every other Android manufacturer is gonna follow Samsung's model so if I'm gonna be buying this phone I go to LG.com and I put in an order for the wing and you know what like I can click buy on the wing but for like $100 more, I can get this combo of a wing 
and a case and uh, some earbuds or a wing and a case and a smartwatch or just something that I can put this together so that when it shows up on my door, I am confident that the phone is there, the appropriate charger recommended by the manufacturer is there, the cables are there, I can immediately put it into something that's gonna protect it. And then, you know, especially if LG is gonna start putting out more of these experimental phones without headphone jacks, I know I've got an audio solution ready to go, LG tones, right? I just feel that would be fun. I, I feel like a lot of people would really appreciate that. So I, I appreciate it because I'm a reviewer and this is the most fun I have with unboxings is when it's, it's, there's, there's a special presentation, right? That, that makes me feel good. It's definitely an emotional high. I hope it's an emotional high we can start sharing with more customers and consumers out there. So, um, Mawash0309, give us a chance to buy the reviewer box. I'm, make a few extras. I don't think your customers are going to let you down. So, um, folks, thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to have, this is Techtober. I still want to piggyback a OnePlus 8T. I, I, I'm wrapping up a, a showdown. There's going to be a comparison video where TK and I are going to be talking about productivity phones and our trio, the Galaxy Note 20 Ultra, the LG V60, and the Microsoft Surface Duo. So we've got a round robin of very different solutions for stylus-enabled, productivity-focused devices, and TK's commentary on that kind of stuff is always brilliant. You're going to want to make sure that you're subscribed to both of our channels to catch that. And... <laughs> Javion Brown, please review the PlayStation 5. I still haven't even finished the Xperia 5. I can't go on to the PlayStation 5 until I finish the Xperia 5. Uh, but I, there, there's, I'm, I'm, I'm scrambling like crazy to write scripts, put together videos, shoot this content. I'm trying not to put a video out every single day or two videos a day. Today was a two video day between the Pixel and the Wing. Um, but I, I just really, I greatly appreciate all of you who have been along for this ride. Um, those of you who have who joined these kinds of conversations that, that drop comments, that, that want to do a little bit more than just, well, I read the spec sheet and that's not worth it for the monies. Because I feel like we're missing some of the color and some of the flavor. Where you can pick up a phone and say, you know what? That's absolutely not a phone for me. But I can imagine someone in my circle of family and friends who would be an exact right fit for that gadget. And I feel it's like that kind of being a good tech neighbor is, is really helpful right now. The world is still crazy and stuff is still wacky and ridiculous. And we end up having a superpower today. Those of us who are like this, these kinds of gadgets that are our hobby as part of our lifestyle, we just enjoy this. We have a superpower in being able to point people towards resources and software and services and gadgets and accessories they might not have been able to find on their own. And I know, and I know for a fact, it's people like, like you all who are tuning into streams like this that can make life so much easier for your family and friends. And you probably won't get the kudos you deserve for doing it, so allow me. Allow me to say thank you for being a good tech neighbor and for being a good tech citizen. All right, I'm gonna bounce. I promised my daughter cheeseburgers, so we're gonna go get some cheeseburgers. Um, I hope you all have been spending time with family and friends in the most appropriate ways that you can or social distancing where appropriate and that you are safe, warm, or safe, well-fed, and, and warm where it's cold and cold where it's warm. <laughs> Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm going to hit y'all back. Be on the lookout for a ton, a, a metric ton of content coming out soon. And it's going to be fun because there's some crazy stuff on the horizon for tech and gadgets. So thanks so much. Take care. Be safe. Be well. And I'll catch y'all on a future live stream. I love y'all.